Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So let us derive some analytical models that we already did in our previous courses. One from solid mechanics, one from dynamics and one from heat transfer. So let us derive the analytical models for these three cases. And this is just a revision of what you have already learned. So, let us derive some mathematical models. So, the main source of this material is from JN Reddy, an introduction to the finite element method. So, the first problem I took is on the dynamics. So, let us derive an differential equation for the motion of the simple pendulum, which represents the motion of the simple pendulum. So, for any analytical model, we need some assumptions, right? So let us see what are those assumptions. So number one, the friction from both the air resistance and the system is negligible. That is, there is no drag force acting on the simple pendulum. As well as there is no friction at the hinge joint. I will show you in a while what is hinge and where is this drag resistance will come. I will show you. The second assumption, the pendulum swings in a perfect plane. That is, there is no swing outside of the plane. That is, whether it is normal or inside, there is no swing of the pendulum out of the plane. That is the second assumption. And the third assumption, the arm of the pendulum cannot bend or stretch or compress. That is, we are assuming it as a rigid body. Instead of a deformable one, we are assuming the bob as well as the rod as a rigid body. Number four, the arm is massless. So what do you mean by massless? It doesn't have any mass, zero mass, no. Massless means the mass of the rod comparative to bob is very very less. So with these assumptions, let us derive the governing equation for the simple pendulum. So what are the variables in this problem? So let us define them before going into the problem. Let small m represents the mass of the swinging end of the pendulum that is mass of the bob. And small j represents acceleration due to gravity and capital L represents length of the swivel point to the center of the mass length of bar theta theta represents the position of the pendulum and t represents time in seconds so here you can see a simple pendulum all of you know how does a simple pendulum is this is not a new one but let us revise it uh, so this represents the hinge this is a rod and this is a bob and as I already told you, there is no friction at the hinge as well as as the pendulum swings, there is no air resistance, there is, there is no drag force and this rod is massless and the mass of this bob is small m, small m kg and this position represents the initial position as I have already written here, this is the initial position. And let theta represents the position of the bob after some time t. So let this be the final position. So with this setup, can we derive the analytical expression, the governing equation? So what are the other ingredients we need to derive this governing equation? So we need some conservation principles. So let us use Newton's second law for rotation or conservation of angular moment. So I want to use the conservation of angular momentum to derive the governing equation for this setup. So in order to use this conservation of angular momentum, we need the torques that are acting on the system. That is, we want to know the forces that are acting on the bob. So that's why let us draw the free body diagram of the bob. So here you can see the bob. This is the bob. And this is the position theta it is making with the vertical. Vertical means the initial position that is here. And let as I already told you m be the mass. So the weight will be the mg which is acting downwards which always acts downwards. And since the motion is in the anti-clockwise direction as I already mentioned here the motion is in the anti-clockwise direction 
so the inertia force or the inertia moment will act in a clockwise direction that is nothing but i theta double dot so what is i i is the moment of inertia of the simple pendulum and theta double dot represents the angular acceleration so with this setup so now you can see that so this is the first torque acting and what is the second torque the second torque is acted upon by this weight ng so if you take sigma t equal to 0 or simply if you assume this hinge as the moment center some o and if you take the summation of the moments about this hinge as 0 then what will happen first one is i theta double dot plus mg is the force multiplied by the moment produced by this force is given as mg into l sin theta so from where this l sin theta came l sin theta came from this right angle triangle so if you complete this diagram here this will be your right angle then this is l this is the length of the rod and i want this distance so this is the perpendicular distance this is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and the moment center o okay so what is this distance this distance is nothing but l sin theta so that is my first moment is i theta double dot i theta double dot plus the moment produced by the weight of the bob that is mg into l sin theta equal to 0 right then the moment of inertia of the pendulum is as we already know that it is ml square so if you substitute this moment of inertia in this differential equation we will get the governing equation of the simple pendulum so just substitute this ml square here and mm will go off ll will go off so the remaining l will come downside of the second term equation will be theta double dot plus g by l sin theta is equal to 0 so what is the nature of this equation the above equation is a non-linear why it is non-linear because of this sin theta term second order it is clearly evident it is second order what is theta double dot d square theta by dt square so it is second order ordinary differential homogeneous equation ordinary differential homogeneous equation it is clear right so this is the governing equation so can we solve this directly this is a non-linear equation so we cannot solve it directly so let, that's why let us do one more assumption let us make one more assumption that is for small deformation theory sin theta we can approximate it to theta that is theta double dot plus g by l replace this sin theta with theta equal to zero so now what is this equation this is nothing but second order linear homogeneous differential equation so we know the analytical solution for this problem we already did it we are doing this from our eighth standard ninth standard so we know the solution of this equation so what is the solution so theta double dot plus let us assume this g by l as omega square so theta double dot plus omega square theta equal to zero so the solution of this above equation is straightforward obviously so can be given as theta of t is nothing but a cos omega t plus b sin omega t so why represent this with omega is there any physical significance for this omega obviously omega represents the angular frequency of this oscillating system so now this is the solution for the above differential equation so is it done 
No. We need to calculate A and B. There are two constants we need to calculate. So how can we calculate them? So we can calculate them using some initial conditions or boundary conditions or a mix of them. So but here, since our variable, our independent variable is time here. So the conditions that are related to time, we call them as initial conditions. That is, uh, I will explain you what are initial conditions, what are boundary conditions, all those things in due course. So but as of now, let us take, take it as granted. Let us take some two initial conditions. Why I am saying two initial conditions? Because I am having two constants here. I need to calculate A and B. I need to calculate two constants. That's why I need two initial conditions. So let us assume at time t equal to 0, let the position be theta equal to theta naught and the initial velocity be v equal to v naught. So with these initial conditions, so just remember this is nothing but theta dot velocity is nothing but theta dot that is d theta by dt don't forget it okay so if you substitute these initial conditions in this solution then you can find out a and b so by substituting the initial conditions in the solution the final solution will be theta of t is nothing but theta naught cos omega t plus v naught by omega sin omega t. So where theta naught represents the initial position and v naught represents the initial velocity. And if you want to simplify it further, let us assume the initial velocity is 0, initial velocity v naught equal to 0, then what is the solution? Theta of t is nothing but theta naught cos omega t which we know the solution of these type of equations. So can you say any other example which exactly represents this form of governing equation? Yes. So the above solution is same as a spring mass system. Even for a spring mass system like a simple pendulum, we will get the same differential equation and similar type of solution. So I mentioned them here. So this is our simple pendulum, just now we have solved. So the governing equation is this, the linear second order differential equation, homogeneous. So this is the governing equation. And if you do the same analysis for a spring mass system, then this is your governing equation. So how does it appear? d square x by dt square plus k by m x is equal to 0. Similarly, d square theta by dt square plus g by l theta equal to 0. So here, what differs? The only difference is these constants. This g by l here, here it is k by m. Only this constant is the difference as well as there it is the rotational degree of freedom and here it is the translational degree of freedom. K by So d square x by dt square plus k by m x is equal to 0. So just to refresh your memory, I wrote the time period for these systems. Since these are oscillatory systems and they are oscillating with a frequency of omega, the time period is nothing but the inverse of omega. So time period t is nothing but 2 pi by omega. So for this system, for the simple pendulum, the time period is 2 pi root over L by G and for a spring mass system, it is 2 pi root over M by K. Clear? Fine. So I just kept a note here. So for every harmonic oscillatory oscillator, oscillator system can be represented by the IBO equation. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ekida. Subscribe to Ekida.